God bless, God bless. Praise the Lord, everybody. Once again, I'm back again. Uh, uh, you have a pencil and pen. I'm still talking on the foundation of Benicola Theology. Bro. I'm still talking on the nature of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm still talking on his nature, man. I've been talking a while on his nature, how God, God used him through, his, through the Lord. He was being used for his glory, for God the Father the same. God the Son is the same. They're one. God said they're one. That's what he told the fairy sales. Me and my father are one. They're the one because they're the guy's identical. His son, right? Because he's got three dimensions. He's a father, son, holy spirit. But he's one God, amen? So I'm, I'm going back to the book. You have a pencil and pen. You can write the scriptures, amen? So let me get back to the book. Praise the Lord. Meaning now, uh, Jesus is a high priest. Uh, the qualification of the priest is that uh, he must be taken from our men in order to be the representative. So you got to be a representative for the people, the priest, in the, in the, in the, in the old covenant, in the, in the tabernacle. He represented God like the atonement. Every year uh, they celebrate the atonement, the high priest. Recently, they celebrated the Jews, the atonement. Every year, the high priest entered the holies of holy, the ark of the covenant, so he could shed the blood uh, 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 seven times, so God will forgive the sins for one year. It's a type of Jesus Christ. When the Lord died on the cross, he shed his blood seven times. He, he was sent to them when they pursued his side, when they whipped him, when they ripped his beard, when they put his hand on the, the nails on his feet, when they bruised him. You're going to see seven places he got. He believed the Lord. It was for me and you. That's what it says, by his stripes, we are healed. And, and Christ is the high priest. He's a true high priest. That was when he had shot in the Old Testament. He came a realized in the New Testament. You see that. And, and he was he's a great Christ. is our representative before God Almighty. When we come before the Father, he said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we got a live audience. God is listening to us. Which is in the, is in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let me go back to the book. He is shared. He has shared that he has state. Um, let's go to Hebrews quickly. If you want to go there with me. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. We thank God that God is answering our petitions, amen. God is listening to us. He knows our requests. He knows everything, but we got to seek him, amen, and learn of God through the word. Many what they do, they pray what's going up. Are they seeking the law? Are they studying the word? Are they seeking who this God is serving? That's what you got to study the word. So it says Romans uh, 10, 17, uh, faith comes by hearing him the word. Do you see that? Let me go to the book here, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, 5, verses 1 to 10. What it says, every high priest taken among men is born of men. And they pertain to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifice of sin. You see, they had to do it constantly. Every year, they had to do the priest in the tabernacle. He can have a compassion on those who are iterant, going astray, since he himself also is subject to weakness. Christ became like one of us. He understood the weakness of man. He understood man is weak. He's fragile. He's sinful. But he forgive them. He come back to know he is as high priest, as a savior of the world. Do you see that? And... Uh, He's trapped, he got 12 traps in the tabernacle, in the middle of the tabernacle. Everybody came with their lamb and gave it to the priest and took it on the bronze altar and sacrificed our blood. And the blood came out and forgive those the family for, for when they committed, God forgive them. And it's typically just scratching the cross. The bronze altar is type of the cross. You got to come to the cross so God can forgive your sins and deliver you and heal you and restore you and transfer your life forever so you can walk in the spirit and in the flesh. Do you see that, my God? Because this is the rejoice required for the people to also for himself offer a sacrifice for sin. You see, every had a sacrifice, it was an offering. He had to be offered for the Lord. He could receive that offering so sin could be forgiven. That's what it says back in Hebrews without the blood, no remission of sin. Blood got to wash you. Without the blood, we ain't going nowhere. The blood's going to identify me and you who we are. The blood's going to protect you from the demonic powers. Thus, you got to apply the blood in your house. You apply the blood in your mind. The blood, the blood in your, your doors, your sons and daughters. The blood the blood in your, in your hand and your work, your possessions. Apply the blood. That's what it says in Revelation. It came with the blood and the word of the testimony. Do you have a testimony? Speak the word of God. Speak of your child of God. Speak this power in the blood. The devil want to hear that. He's going to flee. But you got to be real with the Lord. I got to be real. Do you see that? For no man is taking this honor for himself. For he is called by God just as Aaron was. You see, he was called like Aaron. Aaron was a high priest, but he was the temple of the Lord, Aaron. For the, the high priest came was Christ himself. He's the high priest of our priests. All, five. Also, Christ did not glorify his soul. He became the high priest as where he was. Said to him, you are my son. And look what he's saying, Lord, my son. So I have, I have begotten you. God begotten him across the calorie. He had to pay the tremendous price. Nobody could have to pay. He also is saying in another place, you are a priest forever. You see, after the order of the church is that. So Christ had his own priesthood. He's not of the blood of Abraham's high, uh, priesthood line. There are other priests, but he wasn't part of the bloodline. He was a he was from the pure bloodline, the matrix of that bloodline. And then I can separate Jesus Christ. He's in the old covenant, in the old testament. When the Abraham came with his tithes and offering for the priest, it was matrix of that. And the priest all, you know, took those, those offerings and got and presented for the guy. And God came and blessed him in a mighty way. 
And he was a type of Jesus Christ, Melchizedek. That was guy himself in the flesh. He cut himself in the Old Testament. It's, like of Jesus Christ. it's called typology. Christ incarnated himself in the Old Testament before Abraham. And he received those, those offers and gifts. So give it to God Almighty and God came down and blessed them. Do you see that? That's you got to be in the right place in the wrong, the, right, the right church with the right pastor. So you give your tithes and offers to that church. So God will bless you. We call it to Malachi. As many people holding back their money, they get paid, they make good money, whatever. 10% what you're making, it goes to the Lord. And you got to give those offers to the Lord so God could bless you according to Malachi. That's what Malachi, when I open the windows of heaven, put so many blessings, I don't room to receive. God said to prove them. Then he calls the people, that this one shall rob me. There's a lot of robbers inside the church, a lot of thieves inside the church. You know why? They take God's money, all the money they make. Instead of taking 10% take, take out of it, they take it somewhere, eat the, eat the, they're eating God's money. They're buying clothes from God's money. Instead of taking it to the house of God and giving it to him. Whatever you make, you, you got to give 10% to the Lord. So God could bless you according to the word of God. You want God's blessing, you got to give your tithes and offerings. Like the piece there right here. Do you see that? Back to the word. He also said another place, you are priest for the order of Melchizedek. So every time the, the Abraham came with his offerings and tithes, God, he received the Lord, received to to the hands out and gave it to the priest, Melchizedek, put it before the God Almighty, and God came and blessed Abraham in a mighty way. He blessed him in all ways, spiritually, spiritually, you know, spiritually mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. He became very wealthy, right? Because he knew the principle of giving to the Lord and gave receiving back the Lord. You know, once you release your things to the Lord, your blessing, your, your offering, God comes and releases his hands to you. But you got to be a wise steward of your finance and what you're doing with the money that you, you're making. But anyone he don't want you to get saying, oh, don't worry about that. That's a lie. He's lying. That's a thief. That, that pastor, man, that, that priest, whatever, the guy in that church is a thief. And people pulling for the trap. We got people doing that there, but they're going to get caught soon. God's going to rebuke them. God's going to judge them for that. But if you want the blessings in a special way, in a mighty way, you got to give your tithes and offerings. You got to give it to the Lord. You come with your tithes and offerings to the Lord. God's going to bless you according to Malachi. So you could be meeting in his house. Look at this. Seven. Who in this days are high, are his flesh is the Lord. He has offered a prayer, supplication. That was in Gethsemane. And very many cries and tears to him who was able to save him from the death. It was hurt. hurt because of his godly fear. He was crying to the Father, got sent me low, delivered from this time of temptation, this time I'm about to be crucified. <laughs> and God heard him, God heard the son of his, heard his son. He said, there was your will be done, my father. He took the cup of the world, he drank the cup of suffering. And that wasn't easy. If you look at the Passion of Christ, the original, Mel Mixer made the movie, the original meaning, the, the Passion of Christ, the way he could cry. The way he was tortured, the way he was suffering, my God, was for the entire world. And he died for the, that's what I said for John 12, that's what I said John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, gave his only begotten son, who believes should not perish, but lasting life. Hey, for, for though he was a son, and he, what he did, he learned obedience by the thing which he suffered, you see? And having been perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation, all who obey him, you see? He became the author of eternal salvation, and, and those who obey him. And we obey the Lord, we got salvation, we got deliverance, we got blessings of the Lord. He became the altar for me and you. There was no other person in heaven, no other person. And the devil knows that. There was no other man could be put in that cross. Only, only God could pay the heavy price for the entire world. He was the ultimate sacrifice. The thousands and thousands of sacrifices in the tabernacle, he was the ultimate. That's says John the Baptist. Behold, the Son of God who takes the sadness. Behold, the lamp of God who takes the sins of the world. He was about to, he was about to fulfill the Lord of Sons and the prophets in the cross academy for me and you. I'm going to take you there. Look what it says on, on 10. He, he called by God as a high priest, we call him to order him to so he's So we go before the Lord when I tithe an offering, we go to the church and we give it to the pastor. Now the Lord, the Lord high priest receives that and he sees that with your office and traditions and he goes before the father as the high priest and God, he listens to it and he responds back. Because you're doing the will of God, you're obeying God's going to bless you beyond your dreams. Do you see that? Let me go back. I was saying about when he before the Lord, sons of the prophets, that's in Luke. Let's go to Luke quickly. For you guys to catch on thing. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. I'm gonna start off. Look at what told him. He said to them, This are the words which I spoken to while I was still with you. All the things must be fulfilled, which were written by in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning me. You see, and he opened their understanding, they might comprehend the scriptures. Come on to your mind to understand the word, understand the purpose of God in your life. That he said to him, it's written, uh, I thus was necessary for the Christ to suffer 
and raised the third and raised from the dead the third day. And he did. He rose according to the word of God. He rose the third day from the dead. And repentance, the remission of sins shall be preached in, in his name and all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are my witness of all these things. We got witnesses. That's what's back in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Hey, you should receive power. You should be my witnesses. You should receive power. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. You're going to become a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and parts of the earth. You're going to become God's witnesses if you see God's Holy Ghost and power. Out there's no witness out there. They're full of air, full of demons. You got the power. If you work in God's spirit and truth, you become that witness. God will back you over with demonstration of power. God will say, the devil cannot touch that. You come with the, you rebuke the devil. You pray with the people over sickness over people. They're going to go in the name of Jesus. If you walk in the spirit and truth, if you submit it to God's order, God's will. All righty? Back to the book. God wants us to stay focused on him as the high priest. He's the mature that. Do you see that? Oh, my Lord. Isaiah saw so Jesus in the prophetic vision as a man of sorrow. He was a man of sorrow. He died for me and you. It wasn't easy. And acquainted with grief, as Isaiah 53, verse 3. The true high priest must be also, also must also be able to approach the throne of God on his own primitive. Jesus is the son of the of representative God to man and, co and conversely men to God. A high priest is the good man, God man. You see, the high priest though, after the order of mentions that. Christ is the God man to us. He goes before the Father. When we pray to the Father, you say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, and God's listening, and God's going to respond. If you're walking in the Spirit, if you submit it to God's Word, God ain't going to hear no religious person, person's full of doubt, is full of fear, no way. No, no, no. God said, come to his presence with bonus and ask and request your position for him. Rebuke doubt, rebuke fear in the name of Jesus. Do you see that? The question says in Hebrews, if you believe in God, that he's alive and well. The question says in, in, uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. The devil knows this, man, but he don't want you to know about it because he's a trickster. He knows what's going to happen when you get right with the Lord. When you walk in the order, you know, it's going to activate himself. It is going to start activating. Heaven's going to activate, come to you, and it's going to respond to you, and he don't want that. So he's going to put everything in his part to put it in front of your in front of your life. Put ignorance, doubt, fear. There's no time for this. I know you got to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You got to spend time with the Lord. Spend time in His Word. Spend time in His presence by praying to Him and studying the Scriptures. Look, it says Hebrews eleven one it's six. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is. Do you believe that He is? Do you believe that He is? Do you believe that He's alive and well? As many, they don't believe. You'd be surprised. It's shocking, man. The devil, the devil says in Gen, the demons believe there's one God and they tremble. They know it's a real God. But God created him for his glory, but they were, they were kicked out of heaven, third of them. So they call principalities, rules of darkness, whispering in high places in the second heavens. They have to destroy you and me. They use all kinds of taxes in this earth. They use um, black violence, drugs, you name it, man, to destroy man, to destroy each other, all kinds of stuff, racism, you name it. Yes. You come must believe that he is and a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Are you are you diligently seeking the Lord? Are you seeking the high priest Jesus Christ? Are you walking with him? Are you speaking with him? Are you following in other words, in this walk is not a religious walk? We got thousands of people walking with a religious out there. They're walking with crosses, man. But the one that cross came off the cross already. He was buried. According to the script, Paul says in Corinthians, we come to the scripture, he was he was buried. We come to the scripture, he rose the third day, we call to the scriptures. And he's coming back, we call to the scriptures. That's the hope of the church getting out of here sooner or later. It's called the rapture. It's coming soon. God wants you to walk in the spirit with him, not in the flesh. God say, no flesh, don't, no flesh will glory in his presence. If you're a carnal Christian, you better turn out to become a spiritual Christian. Let me go there. Look what it says in Romans about a carnal person. My God. Romans chapter 8. Let me go there quickly. Romans chapter 8. I'll start in verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh, their minds are, uh, their minds are said things of the flesh. For those who are according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. You see the difference? Six. For to be carnal mind is dead. We got a big group of people in the church that are dead, right? Because they're carnal mind. And a carnal person is all worldly. He's all sensualist. He's all flesh. And God says no. But to be spiritual mind is life in peace. So if you walk in the spirit, you got life in peace. 
Because you're looking with the mind of Christ. Christ was the mind. He was God himself in the flesh with the Father. He represents you and me before the Father. It wasn't for the Lord. We know church. We all be in hell right now. He brought us, I'm calling to Galatians, he brought us out of the slave market, out of bondage, out of the devil's power. You believe from the powers of darkness. Once she was in bind, God delivered from the taking Corinthians. Like once she was in bind, God delivered from those powers. Look at what's right here. Seven, because the kind of my is my is image against God, for it's not subject to the Lord that indeed cannot be. The comment doesn't submit to God's word, it doesn't submit to God's order. It's stumbling, it's rebellious. He wants to be in church, he wants to bless him, he wants to go back to God. He says, No, I don't work like that. I'm not a genie. How dare you? But they want to, but that's how they're doing out there. And they go nowhere. This says the last one, eight. So those who are in the flesh cannot please God. God ain't going to accept them. God, let me show you walking in the spirit. You've been born again from darkness to light. You traveled from darkness to light. Now you're born in the spirit. Now you see that. Once you're born in the spirit, you stay in the spirit. But if you go back playing with the things of the world, what's going to happen? He's going to destroy you. And, and he's out to destroy you and me. Because you don't want us to stay in the spirit. There's a real warfare going on, saints. And we got to stay. Look what says Paul to the Galatians about one time it was. Look, uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going to start in uh, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know the unrighteous when I inherit the kingdom of God? Oh, you hear that? Do not be deceived again. Don't know what he sees. Do not be deceived. And many being deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, worshiping idols, idolatry, adulterers. Homosexual or sodomies. They go nowhere, man. God loves the I, I repeat, God loves the homosexual community, but they are out of order. They need to repent of that. They got their own churches, they got their own Bible, Queen James Version. They go nowhere. The, the gospel for the transgenders and the gay and the gay and, 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 and bisexuals. You know, that's, a, that's an abomination, man. God didn't create Adam and Steve, he created Adam and Eve. And they're in bondage. He loves all the transgenders, he loves all those people, but they're in bondage, they go nowhere. They ain't going to inherit the kingdom of God. They say, no, we're going to go because God loves it. Yes, he's love. But the sin ain't going to get you inside the house. He ain't going to get you into glory. You're not going to enter because that sin is black and going to help God's glory. If you're full of that madness, you ain't going nowhere. You need to repent of that. Get born again. Be delivered. Wow. Look at this. No thieves, no covenants, no drunkenness, no revealers, no extortion, or will not inherit the kingdom of God. This says 11, for such was some of you. Some, sometimes was one of us was one of these one time. You hear that? For such was some of you one time. You were liars, cheaters, manipulators, deceivers, homemongers, you name it. It's lustful, drunkenness, parties. Look at this. But you are washed, washed in the wash, you're washing the blood of Christ. But you are not sanctified, I mean, separate for the Lord, purpose and plans. Now you are justified inside. When God sees you, but God sees the blood of Christ all over you. He sees the seal of the Holy Spirit. That's God says, that's my daughter, that's my son. Do you see that? Wow. Then it says here. See, when you came out, it's three stages. When you came out the way, you were sanctified. You came from the second stage, now you justify God's and you started over. You started a new page. You belong to God's kingdom now. You're walking in light, not in darkness. That second, third stage, then you're going to you're going to be glorified. You're going to be getting out of here sooner than a glorified body. It's coming. It's called the rapture. It's going to happen. That's the next prophetic event. God's giving, uh, spending this time we're living in, so everybody comes to repentance. By the time it's coming, God's going to the clock is going to hit twelve o'clock. The prophetical clock. And that's it. God's going to sound the trumpet and the dead in Christ is going to rise first. It's going to happen. It's going to be a taking away. And those who get left behind, the great tribulation, are going to know God wasn't playing with nobody. Look at this. You're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of the Lord. Do you see that? That's the Lord that the Lord, the, the, the God you mean serve. Then it says, look, back to Romans chapter 8, verse um, 14. For as many as L-E-D, live by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Who's guiding you? Who's leading you? Who's controlling you? Who's molding you? Who's shaping you? The devil? False religion? A man? Brother, you cannot go, man. Good man doesn't have the solution. When you come to the house of God, look beyond the church. Look beyond the pastor. Look beyond the bottle. Behold the Son of God. Look beyond the bottom. Oh, see God, God, see Jesus Christ. See beyond the pastor, son of God, Jesus Christ. See beyond the church, Jesus. Behold him. Away from yourself, away from the world. Stay in the spirit. Stay in the flow of God's spirit. Walk in the spirit. Stay free from bondage and the and deception of the devil. Do you see that? Oh, my God. Then you're going to have the divine nature. We call it to Peter. Let's go to Peter. We have that divine nature. Do you know that? 
That's in the Old Testament. I take you back to a symbolical thing. Gold was type of guy they use gold. Gold was a type of divinity. God, we got a divine nature. Silver is the rendition. We got silver. God has renewed from the powers of darkness, the tabernacle. God used different things for different symbolical things. You see that? So you've been delivered from the power of silver has delivered you. You know, from the powers of darkness. Christ is the redeemer. You've been redeemed from the powers of hell. Now you got a divine nature. We call it to Peter. Let's go to Peter. First, second Peter chapter one, verse four. But what you have been given uh, exceedingly great promises. You got great promises waiting for us. God promised great promise for each one of us if we overcome. The world cannot offer you great promise. It belongs to God to his children. God is a keeping covenant God. God said he's going to bless in his temporary life and the ones who come eternal life. God said those are those are overcome should hurt a nation. Look at all those promises. You become leaders over nations and a great thing in the new, in the new heavens and the new earth. Look at this. You have been given us extremely great price to this promise through that this you may be partake as what? Of his divine nature. You see that? Why did not divine nature? Why divine nature? Why? Why? Because you can escape. Why the escape? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You got that divine nature. You cannot be confronted. You cannot be played with those things. You're not part of that. You got a new nature. You got to keep yourself pure, so pure, so holy. So you won't touch that. You're know, going back by breaking the spiritual law and going compromising by backsliding and going back to the wrong room, the wrong things. We say, yeah, because here my territory. They come seven worse demons, notorious one, and possess your body and your spirit. Your letter beginning was worse than your beginning. It's worse than your beginning. My God. Why you want to have having a legion of devils, a legion? Like the man had 2,000 demons in the body, according to the Gospels. He lived in a, in a tomb like an animal, woo, making noise. And why he went through the pathway? When the Lord went to the other side and went to see him, they said, Who are you? Why you come to the tomb son of the living God, son of Jesus, of Nazareth? He got to him, What is thy name? My name is Legion, thousands of us. That's scary, man. Thousands of demons out of the body. I don't think no man in this plant could have cast those devils when he got could have done that. No priest, nobody with exorcism, nobody could have done that. You got to be spirit filled to cast those devils out. You're full of religion. You're full of doubt. You're full of fear. And God, God was going, I know what you're doing. He's going to tell you. But when the sons of, in the book of Acts, the sons of steel was trying to cast out devils, say, we cast you out by Paul, the, the, Jesus Christ, and Paul preached. You know saying? And the devil said, we know Paul, we know Christ, but who are you, the total? And they're trying to cast them. What happened? They took their clothes and ripped off their clothes. They ran out naked. And people started to say, oh, my God, look at the sons of the high priest. The whole city saw it. They ran out from the house. They're trying to do exorcism. But the Lord here cast out those devils out of those 2,000 men. He had like 2,000 or more. And they all came out of his body. He, he had his right mind. He wanted to go with God to preach. God said, no, go to your own. And what the Lord has done for you. And I always said it. We started to say, biblically, that he went around the world and preached the gospel. Many got converted to his testimony. That we do each one of us. And we stayed in the focus of the Lord. He don't care you're a woman or a man. Are you willing to use for God's glory? He don't care about your color, your skin. He, he don't care about your nationality. He's looking at your heart. He's looking at my heart. That's why he told Prophet Samuel, I don't look at your appearance, Samuel. I look at the heart. He knows what's inside your heart. He knows the issues of life. Like I said, keep your heart all in for out of the issues of life. And in the abundance of the heart, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What are you full of? Are you full of God? You're full of air. Are you full of people? Are doubt? you full of doubt? Are you full of soul operas? Are you full of all kinds of stuff in TV? Are you full of the word of God? What are you full of? Talk to me. Ah, that's what God told me. By you know by the color of the skin. No, -uh. by their fruits you're gonna know them. By their fruits, fruits gonna not find me who you are when your conduct. I'm gonna see how you're gonna act and your conduct and your actions and talk and what you're doing. You got the fruits of the flesh or the fruits of the spirit. Let's go to the fruits then. Oh my God, who's talking? Who's talking to us there, Lord? Who's listening to me, Lord? Let's start from verse uh, Galatians chapter five on the fruits. Verse 18, if you live by the spirit again, remember the word LD, live by the spirit, you are not under the law. We cannot keep the law. The law belongs to the Jewish people. They still live in the law. We can't be under grace dispensation, not law. They already been fulfilled across the calorie. But still the Jews live in the Old Testament. But they don't believe Christ came yet. But one day, so because Zechariah says he's going to show his marks. They're going to see he came already. They run out there. Paul says they got a veil in their forehead. They can't see God. Those who get converted, God takes away. They become Lysianic Jews. Verse 19. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Which of these? Adultery, fornicating, uncleanness, aloneness, adultery, worshiping idols, sorcery, hater, contentious, jealous, outbursts of wrath, selfish, ambitious, intention, heresy, envy, murders, drunkenness, rebellious, like that, which I told you beforehand, just I also told you in time past. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. They ain't going nowhere. Then it says, by the fruits of the spirit, now you see, they ain't going nowhere. 
and they're practicing these things. That's the fruits of the flesh. But no, but the fruits of the spirit is what's the fruit of the spirit? Are love, joy, peace, no suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control against us. There's no law. There's no law. You see that? And those who are in this Christ have crucified the flesh with passion and desire. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceived, broken one another, envy one another. Stay in the spirit, grow the fruits of the spirit. Are you growing in the spirit to have the nature of Jesus Christ? Are you meditating on the word of God? Look what says in Psalms 1. I'll take you to Psalm 1. What kind of fruits are you bearing? Look what says in Psalms 1 1. Blessed is the man of the woman, look at that, who walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Those who know what the heck they're doing. They're out of order. They're wicked. They're foolish. That's what says, that's what says Solomon and Proverbs. He that walks with a wise wife by the companion of fools will be destroyed. Do you see that? This is back in Exodus. Do not follow a crowd to do evil. Do not follow a crowd to do evil. Many do it. Look at this. No stand the pep of sinners. No sin in the seat of scornfuls. But his delights in the law of the law. You see, what's the key word? Meditate day and night. Are you meditating on God's things? Are you meditating? He should look like we consider as a tree. It should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water next to the Holy Spirit. And they bring forth fruits. Remember the fruits? Fruits in the season. You're going to bear in season, you're going to bear fruits. All these seasons we are going through, all this summertime, all these months after month, weeks, how many fruits you bear? Do you bear more fruits of the flesh or fruits of the spirit? In other words, have you grown in a certain way spiritually or are you still in the same level? All the time, what you did with that? You were meditating on things of God or you was watching out of TV and going to places and partying, barbecuing. There's nothing wrong with that, but wait a minute. You get time to the Lord? In other words, ah, look at this. They bring forth fruit in the season. We should not wither. And wherever they does, ain't going to wither. You don't believe ain't going to wither. You're going to say God's going to preserve it. And whatever he or she does, show prosper. Show prosper. If they meditate this right here. Prosperity comes from the word of God. It doesn't come from no Hollywood, no Wall Street. Look what God told Joshua in chapter 1 of Joshua. Joshua went to with a new generation. The old generation got left behind for disobeying the law. They all died in the desert. He entered with the young people. And he about to battle, battle 32 kings. And God, God gave Joshua uh, 33 kings. He battled, like 30, and he gave him the, 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 the formula. Joshua chapter 1, verse um, 8. Look what God told you to, to, to Joshua. And to each one of us. This book of should not be part of your mouth. But you should meditate. The word again, meditate day and night. That you may observe and control that's written therein. For they that make the way prosper have good success. Woo! You want success? Start from the word of God. This is back to the epistle in the New Testament. John, the author of John, the epistle of John, the book of the same author, John, the beloved, said it. He wish up, he said, Beloved, wish about this, you prosper, being in hell. I say, so prosper. God wants to prosper you, but it starts inside by you building the inside. You're feeding the new man has been born again. You got a new man has been born again because the new man has been born again. Are you feeding the new man by studying the word, by eating the word? Are you meditating on the word? Are you going to services like God did man come to the house of God in prayer? That's why God said many forsake the assemble. Many forsake it. They ain't going nowhere. We got a big body of people are confused, full of doubt and fear inside churches, man. But they're not being properly fed, being properly to become a warrior, to become a militant person. But the war is real. It's a real a war warfare going on in the spirit world. Second row is a real war coming against us right now, trying to attack us. But God's angels are protecting us from touching us. And we're being, being bombarded. Where's the battle? The mind. The mind is the battlefield of the devil to attack up here. That's what you got to be in your thoughts. You got to meditate on the word in your mind. That's what says uh, Romans chapter 12. Look what the Romans. Romans chapter 12. That's taking me. Look at that. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Look what it says in Romans chapter 12. Write it down, verse 2. Let me start in verse 1. Remember, God became a living sacrifice. Now once you become a living sacrifice. Look what it says Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, he's begging them. By the mercy that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is similar to God, which is your reasonable service. Are you presenting your bodies a living sacrifice or are you playing with sin? Are you hanging out with the wrong people? Or you can all hear me, little guy. I ain't gonna hear nothing. When you come to churches, they can hang out with the wrong people, with the old friends from the past. They're drinking, they're cussing, and they expect you got to bless them when you come to church. That's not living, that's a perverted sacrifice. I ain't gonna accept that. God don't want sacrifice, he wants obedience. You become the living sacrifice, we call it in the bronze altar in the tabernacle. You get crucified, you die to the old nature. Do you see that? This is 12. 
Do not be conformed to this world or its philosophy, but be transformed. What the key word? Remember the word renewing of your mind. You got to renew the thoughts that you may prove what is good and essential in the perfect will of God. When you got God in your life, nobody can sidetrack you. Nobody can deceive you. They will come bring help in public say, listen, devil, I'll be puking, man. That's a lie. You want to tell this what God says in the word. That's what it says back in the epistle of John. Beloved, what says John, the epistle of John? Chapter 4, verse 1. We're taking, we're talking to you, Lord, Lord. First John, first John, chapter 4, verse 1. Look what it says here. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit. You got to test them out. Test the spirit, wherever they are, they are God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. You got to test them out. I said that Christ came in the flesh. That's God. Not that's the Antichrist spirit. Because if you continue reading from 1 to 2 and 3, you know who's who. Are you exercising your spirit, man? Are you, are you developing a spirit, man? Look at this. Let's go to Hebrews. If you've been a long time in the Lord, you should be, you know, the word of God in a certain way. Now, you've been there 10 years, 20 years. What is wrong with you? Look what Paul says here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. Look what Paul says to the Hebrew. Look what he said. Though by this time, you ought to be teachers already. Know the word of God. Help somebody else who's fried, who's hurt, who's bitter, who's full of craziness. But you can help them out and teach them the things of God. Yes. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the articles of God? Wait a minute, what's wrong with you? Been too many years already. You still obey. Look, you have need, come to need milk again, not solid food. All this time you're still drinking milk. You believe that? Those are the type of people that never grow, never go forward. They're a bunch of, they're a bunch of, excuse the word, they're foolish. They ain't going nowhere. Especially back prophet was there. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They can't handle solid food. What says? Everyone who partakes of milk and skillful in the word of righteousness. Why well, he is? He's still a baby. Gaga, Google, Mama. Gaga. Gaga news no Google, Gaga person. Paul says to the Corinthians, when I was a child, I acted like a child. But when I put child things on, I became woman, I made a maturity. No more playing church. Stop playing church. No more playing. I'm for real with you, devil. I'm coming after you. I'm going to expose you. I'm going to go forth for the Lord and Savior. I'm going to present and tell them who I am. I'm going to testify my testimony. My God. Look what it says. But silent food belongs to those who are full of age and maturity. That this, those who are by the reason of the use have their senses exercised. You got to exercise your senses. But look at this. For this concerning from, from good and evil. You don't know what is right from wrong, in other words. But if you're still in that, in that stage, in the level of babiness, you ain't going nowhere, man. Everything you see is out of order, you say it's good. Everything is good, you say it's out of order. You're in blindness. You need to repent of that. You need to come to the cross so God could deliver you. God could mow you to the nature of Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Who I'm talking to out there, Lord? Woo! Who I'm talking to out there, Lord? Who's listening to me, Lord? Oh, my God. Look, look what it says in Timothy about not striving with people. If you're serving a God, you're supposed to be striving. You're supposed to win it over to your side, not to their side. But you start arguing with them. You start complaining with them. You start fighting. You're going to fall in the devil's trap. The devil's setting you up. So you can talk back. God says, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Let's go there. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, 23. Avoid foolish ways, St. Timothy, Paul to Timothy, spiritual son. Po avoid foolish, iterant dispute, know that it generates strife. You hear that? Don't fall for that. Rebuke that. Walk away from it. It's going to bring strife. Well, you're going to start little things. It's going to escalate. But a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach patience. You see that, right? And humility, correcting those who are out of position. You see that? How to correct? You hear that? A God perhaps will grant them repentance that they may come to know the truth. That's what God wants for them. But they're ignorant, they're foolish, but you know it's out of water. So you represent the Lord. You say, listen, man, you told me you come with the gospel of God. You come with the love of God. You don't come with a striking spirit. And that's if you're a child of God and something's wrong with you, you better check yourself according to, to Corinthians. Look at this. And that they may become to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. You see that? And if you're a spiritual son of God, a spiritual, you're supposed to know how to act, how to conduct yourself. The word told me they didn't know how to behave so wisely. You got to be a wise person, how to be, be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dog. God wants you to behave wisely before the enemy. And the enemy's going to be afraid of you. Why? 
don't know who's got you what I'm saying, Lord. Who's listening to what I'm saying? Who's listening to me, Lord, like Lord? I'm giving them the word I got to him, Father. I'm giving them wisdom to him, Father. Look what it says in 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel quickly about King David, the great king he was. He got his adultery and murder. God forgive him, but he was still consequences. But he's going to play a role in the millennial ring of God. He's going to play a role. But that's God's summons. He's going to play the heart. The rudy person with beautiful blue eyes, he had reddish hair, he played for the Lord. They don't tell the Lord, he was a type of Jesus Christ. He was a king of priest and a prophet. Christ is a king of priest and prophet. He was, a, he was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because he was a man. If they was watching him, he fell for it. He should have known better, but he humbled himself. People says here, by the way he behaved himself. I'm going to start, I'm going to start 18, 1 Samuel 18, verse 5. David went up wherever Saul sent them. That was King Saul. And behaved was so wisely. And Saul sent him over the men of war. He was accepted in the sight of all the people. Why? Also in the sight of Saul's servants. Why? Because he behaved so wisely. He acted foolish. It says, um, 14. David behaved so, what can the result? David behaved so wisely in all ways. And the Lord was with him. You see, God loves that when you behave so wisely. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, behaves so wisely. The Lord said he, he, he grew in wisdom and stature, have favor with God and with man. That's the next verse. Look at the results. When you, when you walk with the Lord, spirit and truth, you behave wisely. That's what says back Solomon. He that walks with wise is wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. You know why? They don't maintain the word. And a multitude of counsel is safely. Where there's no vision, people perish. Where there's no counsel, they all fall flat in the face. 15, therefore, when Saul saw that he became so wisely, he was afraid of him. And Saul was out of order, but he was afraid of David. Whoa. That there was going to be afraid of you if you him so wisely. In other words, you're going to fall in his trap. You're going to be so wisely. You're going to stand your ground and compromise with nobody. If anybody forsake you, stay there. God's going to back you off. Do you see that? I should have gone back to Joshua meditating. What's this in Joshua? We go back again. This is Retta, right? I didn't read the last chapter, the last verse. I don't care about it. Everybody can forsake me. That's what I said in the Psalms. David said it. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord's going to take me up. Ooh. There it is. He read, right? I'll repeat it again. This boy will show another part of the map, but you should meditate day and night recording to this written then recording a zerk. Written then for you should make that way plan to success. And then it says, man, have not command you. Be strong and a good courage. He's telling you. Be not afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, is going to be right next to you, the Lord and Savior, the King of glory. If you're walking with spirit and truth, if you're walking with the king of glory. That's just our song. I'm walking with the king. The devil's mad at me, but I'm walking with the king. It's a song that I some, somebody met that, met that song. They wrote it. I'm walking with the king. The devil's mad at me. It's too bad. He's angry because you're walking with the king of glory. He can't stand it. He could help him pop, but he cannot blow. He can't blow the, he can't blow the house in. Why? Because the ones in front is God Almighty. He got his mighty angels around there with swords of fire protecting from the power to come to your invade to invade your territory, invade your life. They cannot touch you. God said, I will give you, God says in the south, he will give his angels in charge over us and keep us in all thy ways. That should put the foot against the stone. This says that, right? Psalms 91. That says in the south, the angel of cancer wrong doors that fear the Lord. Do you fear the Lord? Do I fear the Lord? Better believe it. What's that 2 Corinthians 13, 5? Examine your soul. Are you examining your soul? Test your soul. You in the faith or not. Why? We walk by faith, not by sight. Don't you know Christ is in us? God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The nature of God is in us. The divine nature. Last thing is qualified. We got a lot of people in the church that made it disqualified. They don't even know. They, they're foolish. They're playing church, man. Playing, playing goods. When they go to the house of God, they don't see the house of God. Praying, the house of prayer. That's the house of social club. A house of uh, dating game. A place to eat. They have all these foods on the other, on the other part of the, of the church. Hey, everybody shows up. Hey, we're going to have a good feast. Everybody could eat whatever we want. Hey, how you doing, brother? God bless you. Ah, like, hey, you know, Jesus good. Jesus this. Oh, yeah, bless the Lord. All this hypocritical talk. The worst is in the prophets. They come as my people. They worship my people. Their heart is far for me. And I ain't going to none of that nonsense. But God then comes to the pastor. Let's to next week. We're going to have an all night visual. We're going to fast from the 12 all the way to 7 in the morning. You're going to be the loneliest person inside that church, man. I ain't going to who's who in the message. When you can see your few faithful ones, but the whole front chair is all empty. That's not the man. It's true. But you call on a feast, everybody's going to be all kinds of dishes and food. Everybody shows up. Why? Right? Because the flesh is alive. You got to be crucified because they want to crucify the flesh. 
This is my torture to for the princes. Their, their bellies, they got. Look at that. And that and it's destruction. They don't mind earthly things. And they go nowhere. That is destruction. That's what they choose. So they got is their belly. God took you out of that world to walk in the things of his in the kingdom of light. You're supposed to be for heaven. You're supposed to be connected to the things of heaven, not things of the earth. True, we gotta work, we gotta open our business, we gotta go to school, but make sure you balance over the things of God. Make sure you got you got a balanced spiritual walk. Oh my God. That took you to Colossians. What's this in Colossians? But those supposed to be in the Lord. Colossians chapter 3. Because this in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If you are risen with Christ, and seek those things which are above. You hear that? Where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Woo! Right now he's sitting as a high priest next to his father. He's, he's an advocate before the father, according to John. He's your advocate. Father, you, you ask your position and prayer, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, God's going to listen to you. God's going to respond. You got to connect your soul with God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Make sure your relationship with Jesus Christ is a good relationship with the Lord. I repeat, if you're rich with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is at the right hand of God. He's your high priest, the Lord Jesus. What says? Set your minds on things above, not things on the earth. Set them up on earth. You set them things up on the, on the things of God. You see, we are heavenly bound, not earthly bound. We got more, we got more people in earthly bound in church than heavenly bound. They're not, they cannot just concern from right from wrong. You know that? You know what's that, man? They don't have no concernment. That's scary, man. Paul says to the Korean, if any man wants to be in it, go be iterant. You want to go ahead and go be iterant. I don't want to be iterant, man. You know what? It's too expensive. Oh, forget about me. I don't exist. I'm just a fairy tale with little horns and a big tail. Brother, he's real. He's a real being. He's out to destroy you and me. The word says the thief only comes. John 10 10 says the only the thief only comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Then says Revelation, war to the heavens to the earth. So they'll be kicked out of heaven. He know he got a short time. Soon he's going to be about a thousand years in the bottom of his pit. He knows that. You and me are warfare when I to talk to you. You got to be a, a militant mind. So God could train you, mold you, and shape you if you let the Holy Spirit do it for his glory. Many go to church, glory, glory, hallelujah, la, la. But they don't, they don't think about warfare. I love you, Jesus, glory to your name, Lord. Oh, Jesus, glory, glory. But when it comes to fight against the powers of God, you know what they do? They run. Oh, sister, pray for me, brother. Pray for me. Pray for me. Instead of confronting the situation. Paul says, be strong, the Lord, and the power is mine. Put on the whole arm of God. Read me chapter 6. Uh, you got to fight. Let me take you. When you have a time, I want to take you there. Read, uh, when you go to fight, uh, your voice, I want you to read Ephesians chapter 6. Start from verse 10 all the way to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Paul says in verse 10, Finally, my brother, be strong, the Lord, in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. You'll be able to stand against the wars of the devil. For we don't work against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the power and rulers of wickedness, of dark, dark, rulers of darkness in, in this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly place. Then in, the, in the second heavens right now. And through those portals, the real portals, they go through those stargates that come to our realm, try to attack us. All you see, all this interview, all this UFO thing, those are intermissional spirits that come into our realm. They're manifesting themselves. They're real beings. They got in, they call them soul identities, and people call it your fault according to the human language, but they're real. And they're manifesting themselves everywhere around the world. They're from the second heavens. They were meant to worship God, but they rebel against God. God created for his glory. And to many, you know, you don't understand what these things, they're being, all these superhuman things fast. Well, they got technology, they know about technology, the money things. Way back in the beginning of time, they gave me how to create witchcraft, how to create weapons. It was done. Who did that? Out of the two, out of the 30, it was, two, it was kicked out 200 of them. It was kicked out 200 of those angels. They want, they want up in, I want to talk about it, Mount Hermit. And they came and borrowed the whole place, man. To have been a disaster. Thank God we got uh, books outside book. Explain to us more things with the word of God. 66 was outside book. Information. If you know the ABCs of the world, they'll tell you this is going to happen. It's how it happened. And we need to get informed in the word of God so we can know who has a children and living God. But that's out to destroy you. He's out to deceive you. He's out to move you to something horrible. You was created to be creating God's image. Why? Because it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse um, 12 and 13, God wants to equip you. 
for the equipment of the saints. That's what we're going to be the five offices called the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, and teacher. Why number five? Because God's grace to the world. God sends straight to the world to save the people from the devil's grip, take them to heaven. That is the one to be delivered. But it says also, Portugal, Corinthian, marvel not. Since he trusts like an angel of light, he got his false minister. If God got the five offices, imagine what he got. They come with Bibles in the church, they call called warlocks and witches. And they come say, oh, God loves you a lot. And so they stop, they're lying. They watch because they're spiritual alive in the spirit. And they're watching each one inside the church. Those we got like children being the, the, the bar, such to say, they mean the bar, being another division. That pastor went his way, the people went their way. He had to destroy the churches through all these false so called vessels of his that come to the church. Thus, you got to be equipped to understand the powers of darkness, how to fight him back. <laughs> for, for the equipment of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the fighting the body of Christ. God wants to equip you. God wants to identify you who you are as a child of God. You got to get equipped. 13, until we come to the unity of faith, that's purpose, in the knowledge of the Son of God. God wants you to go in the unity and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Look at that. To be what? To go to the perfect man. You become the perfect man, perfect man and woman of God. To the measure and the statue of fullness of Christ. So what's going to happen? That you're not going to be your children. You should be a child. Toss and fro, camera, every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men, that was instruments, uh, cunning, cracking, deceiving, waiting to plot it. They want to get you. They want to warn you something horrible. That's you got to know the sign of doctrine. <clears throat> There's 12 doctrines we got to study. It's one is God the Father, doctrine, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the doctrine of angels, that's demonology, the doctrine of demonology, the doctrines of man, doctrine of sin. All those doctrines you got to study. Yeah. Doctrines people don't talk about in church. You got to study when I'm talking about doctrine of a God the Father here. <clears throat> I'm in the doctrine of Father, but I'm talking about the nature of Jesus Christ, how the Christ made memory bear the Son of God. Now I'm talking about the nature of Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm going. Let me scroll back here again. Second Timothy. What is the purpose for the child of God and the woman of God? So it won't form the devil's trap. Thank you, Lord. Let me get to the first sheet. This is Second Timothy. I pray you guys being blessed. May you be in more shape to God's order. But I want you to grow. I want you to be. I want you to expand. What says Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen and seventeen? All scriptures given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for what? Profitable for what? For doctrine, knowing the 12 sign of doctrines, for it proving you correction, instruction, and righteousness. That's God's purpose. Look at it. That. that the man of God and the woman of God may be completely, truly equipped and there be good work. That's it. Do you see that? He wants you to grow in grace, according, according to 2 Peter 3, 8, to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you see that? Thank God. Let me go back to the book. Jesus had human attributes, you see? Just as the hunger, he thirsts, he hunger, he thirsts, he, he tears, he fagues, you see, he got, he got, he was a man. He used the bathroom. Guy used, he got, guy ate. He had a fish in a, and, and, and what a guy, he said, give me some fish. He gave him fish and, a, and honey, remember? He was in the sea next to him, but they were fishermen. God could have got married, but he didn't, because he was a man. But he said, no, he's too single for the father. He had to fulfill that mission. He was single, Paul was single, Jeremiah was single, Elijah, Elijah was single. There's two eunuchs for the Lord. That wasn't easy, but see, Jeremiah wanted to get married. God told him, no, you married to me, Jeremiah. And he killed, he got cut off his, his fiance. It was sad. Like I said, no, we had a purpose with a prophet. Do you see that? God, knows he experimented each one. He experimented his life to know what is a human being. He experimented. That's what it says in the word in John. He was in the world that was made through him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, his own receiver. But those two we see not born in the world of the flesh, of men of blood. But I got those are sons and daughters of God. And look what you born again, a new nature, the divine nature. <clears throat> oh, my God. Mm. Even after the resurrection, the glorified body, he will invite, he invited Thomas to touch his hand and the side of it to feel his wounds. He still retained his humanity as long as his divinity in Revelation 19 and 13. In other words, right? When he was, the, Thomas said, well, if I could touch him, I believe. So what happened? The Lord came through the door. like, a, like a, He came through the door. The guy's amazing. And he appeared before them. He said, Thomas, come over here. Touch my side, my womb. No, no ghosts have flesh and bones. And when he touched, he said, oh, my God, my father. 
He said, Tommy, because you, you, saw, you saw me and touched me and believed. Blessed are those as you and me, because they didn't seem still be believed. That's me and you. We ain't seen, but we're going to see him. We're going to see him. He's coming. He said it. He's coming soon. People think it's a joke, man. They're taking this light. You're saying many horses, too many in the light that's going to depart from faith. They're going to fall away like dominoes. They're going to fall to darkness and demons. It's going to happen. The day is getting closer and closer. We're going to see that great time of apostasia. Many are going to walk away from the Lord. They're going to say, What are you talking about, man? They're going to go back doing their own thing, like always, man. Curse and hair, no go for virgin. You didn't name it. If I got those two in due to should be safe. He promised he's coming back for us. He's going to come. I had this young lady came out on Facebook, all tattooed. She was walking around. God saw her. Oh, my God. She was crying. That was, God was God be good to me that he's coming back. He told her I'm coming back. Told the people I'm coming back. Getting my people out of here. And the, that's the hope of this church, being ratchet out of this world. Stay focused on the law. Stay holy. Like he is holy. Don't play with sin. Do not play with the devil. People are foolish out there. They're all much of, excuse the word, morons. They're foolish. They're about to celebrate the highest festival of are saying is on Halloween, man. It's going to be thousands of worshiping that footy loser. Giving, they dedicating their lives to the, the devil, their body, doing all kinds of rituals, man. Sacrificing babies like fools, man. God sees all that. And they go going nowhere. They do all kinds of rituals, but God's going to get all of them, man. But the devil's a Catholic. Well, God, God was doing that in the tabernacle. That was the type of the law he was doing. I was God demanding that a sacrifice for his system of blood, for blood, power in the blood. Why is the blood of Jesus? Is the blood, that's what I say. The, without the blood, is no remission of sin. For them, he has taken that for his side of darkness through human sacrifice. And they're going to be judged for that. They're murderers, killers, man. They ain't going away, those, those monsters. They, they are so and so complete to the devil. And that day is coming, they're going to be accountable for that. One is abortion. They have killed millions of babies, my God. You know how many babies have been killed in the mother of the woman's womb? They're going to be accountable for all of them. All those monsters, all those Frankenstein monsters who took them out of the womb. And all those mothers who did that, they're going to, oh my God, forget it. You cannot play with life, man. Many, many have done it, man. Oh my God. So he came in human, human, uh, humanity as a man, and, and he resurrected, and he showed Thomas these wounds. Look, he returns, he's going to return to the ring on the earth. It said to him, he, will, he was clothed with a vasture dipping blood, with his own blood. Look at that. In his Revelation chapter 21, we see Jesus at, let's go that way, at, as with, with the Father in the new Jerusalem. He's coming down with the new Jerusalem from heaven. He is created as a new city, who's making God and God is God, according to Hebrews. He is called the Lamp of God. The Lord, therefore, positioned work of Jesus was to be the prophet. And priest and king come in age. Jesus will ret retain this same uh, uh, destination. This destination is going to, it's going to, I'm going to stop here, but he's going to do that. I'm going to stop here, but he's going to do that. He's going to bring back again as king of glory, king of kings. He's coming back for you and me, brother and sister. Let me be one more version. That's it, one portion here. Let's go, let's go to the book of Acts quickly. And that's it before I release you guys. Acts chapter three. Verse 19 to 26. It says Acts chapter 3, verse 19 to 26. Then repent, the book of Peter said, therefore repent and cover your, your sins may be brought out. The time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached into you before, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoration and the fullness of things. It's, already, it's here already. The fullness of things already here. Which God spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the Father, the Lord God will raise up me a prophet like me. I was prophesied by Moses for your brethren that happened in the New Testament. You should hear all things by hearing he said to you. It should be that everyone that saw should not hear the prophet should be truly be destroyed from among the people. You see that? Yes, all the prophets from Samuel, those who follow many as to have spoken, also have foretold these things these, these, things, these days. The prophet, prophet upon prophet was prophesying, but Christ is going to come one day. He did. He came like one of us. You are the sons of the, are, are the, sons of the prophets of the covenant which God made with our fathers to Abraham and to your see all your all the families of the earth be blessed. Wow, you hear that? And you are the you are, to you the first guys raised up a servant Jesus. He raised him from the dead. Raised Jesus a servant, servant Jesus sent him to bless you. To turn every one of you from your iniquities. 
from your sins. That's the purpose of the Lord. He came to take us away from the devil and give us a new start. He became that second enemy going to the word. I'm going to stop here. Praise the Lord. I'll continue tomorrow. God help me. Praise the Lord. I'm going to have my business to pray that God continue adding new people to the Zoom. They go, you guys continue growing the things of God and continue catching what I'm saying through this beautiful teaching on the, on the doctrine of God through the, on the nature of Jesus Christ. You can know who you are as a child of God, what has given us. God bless. Go ahead, honey. Pray, please. Amen. Father, we thank you so much that you are a priest in the order of from existing interceding for us that we give to you before you know uh, I provide you the order and the heart so the road of of Jesus, a high, a high priest. Yeah. All right, Bishop. See, uh, see that also. Yeah. All right, praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know what happened to us. So, praise the Lord. I'm going to do my other benediction. Amen. Continue tomorrow. Let me just quote right here. In a second. If you have a prayer request quickly, I'm going to pray for it. Amen. You can announce it right now, the prayer request before I close it. Praise the Lord. Huh? Huh? Yeah. So, all right, God bless the praise the Lord. There's something going on the internet over there. Let me pray, praise the Lord, the benediction. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, praise the Lord. If you any prayer requests, saints, you could, I know. We'll pray for you right now. We'll text it to us and we'll pray for them. We'll have it in prayer, amen. Um, Numbers chapter 6, the peace prayer, verse 24 and 26. Um, The Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord make faith shine, to, shine upon you. The Lord, will, the Lord makes faith shine, to, shine upon you and be gracious into you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. Father, we thank you for them. Bless them, Father God. Keep them in your perfect peace and harmony. Let them grow in your things, my Lord. Let them be faithful to you, Father God, for you're not done with them, Father God. Him on a beautiful way, my beautiful day, my Lord. Let meditate what's been taught and keep away from the wrong influence and wrong talk, my Lord. Let them keep you here, tender what you say to them through your word. Let them meditate in your word. Meditate. God says, meditate on my word, children. Meditate. We show you will prosper, said the Lord. I want you to prosper. I want you to prosper inside your spirit, man. Is your inner man was to prosper. That's what says my word to my servant. I wish about things you probably be, 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 be you may prosper, be in health as I so prosper. For we prosper inside, working for us out. So meditate on my word, but I will surely prosper you if you wait to my word. For, for, for God says, if you meditate, I'll give you success and prosperity. God said, you'll be prosperous and successful if you meditate. Observe my word and meditate on my word. For there are the issues of life. Here's the word. It's my life. It's my son here. This is a life here out of my son. Here. So stay focused on me. Stay faithful, said the Lord. And I will be faithful to you. Father, I bless them. And I come with your blood. My mom, each one of them, their needs, Father, give them a, a victorious life, my Lord. Let them walk with you. It could be used for your glory. Each one of them, Father. And raise them up to save others from the devil's lives and be part of God's kingdom, your kingdom, my light, Lord. They could be with us in the glory and rapture, being with you forever in glory, my new Jerusalem, Lord. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This is Apostle Lizaro Zambra, guys. God bless you. Have a great day for me as a light. And, we got, and God bless you. God bless your sister. Uh, Dini, uh, Dini, what was her name? Amanda. Uh, no. Amanda. Sister Amanda, God bless you. Have a great day. Sister Sylvia, Sister Stephanie, Brother Singh, God bless you. Sister Lisa, and the other one is also. Awesome. And the other sister was her name. Demani. Uh, Demani, uh -huh. De 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 God bless you, sweetie. God bless you guys. Demani, God bless you. Have a great day. I love you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. God bless you. I love you guys. Have a great day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Be blessed, amen. Don't miss it tomorrow. 8 o'clock in the dot tomorrow. 8 o'clock. All right. God bless.